This is like our 30 something, 30th, 31st, 33rd, something like that time streaming tyranny. I wish I could say we've become exceedingly efficient at it, but we have not. We have not. We are just as lousy as ever. Um, what do we have to do now? We have to go see Graven Ash again, right? We, we I think, um, unlocked the last spire last time, and we got rid of Cairn. Yeah, only streaming once a week. 30 weeks means we started streaming this, like, what, the beginning of the year, I think. So we've been playing this for most of a year. Turn to Graven Ash. That's right. Well, we rested here. I wasted a couple of campfires, because I'm pretty sure you can rest without the campfire in the spires, but I didn't figure out how to do that. Hey, 2155 is here. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, I think we were doing a whole bunch of talking last time to uh, Kills and Shadows, mainly. A little bit to Lantry. I could talk and catch up with Ebb. Be the last word upside down. Hello! Oh, okay. I started actually turning my neck. Try to read it upside down. That's pretty ridiculous. Uh, what I'm saying is I don't think we have anything else we have to do here at the Spire. I think we can get the hell out of Dodge and go see Graven Ash. Because there are no other quests that are lighting up the map here. So, Iron Hearth it is. One day. That's not bad. That's what teleportation gets you. Anything like Divinity? Um, which Divinity? <laughs> Original Sin? I haven't played Original Sin. Divine Divinity? Not really. Made by the same game makers, though. Game developer studio, right? Of course. I believe so, anyway. Oh, right! That's what we were going to do. Barrack and uh, Verse have things they want to say to us. So let's... I forgot about that. We were going to do that at Spire. It is rare enough that anyone has the opportunity to proclaim an edict, much less break one. How are you holding up, Fatebinder? Ooh! Wow! Thanks, 2155. Hang on one second. Let me, let me thank you properly. That's awesome. I appreciate it. It's a very kind uh, subscription. With Prime, in fact. Subscribe for three months, says 2155. You are an absolute mensch. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Smiley faces all around. Um, how am I holding up? Well, I toy with powers greater than my understanding. Don't stop. Somebody stop me. I would be more concerned if the case was... Sub-badges. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot, Max. I forgot. More concerned if the case was otherwise. Okay. Take care that you don't exhaust yourself and become worthless to the war effort. Me? Beric looks you up and down with appraisal, keeping any conclusions to himself. What can I do for you? Oh, yeah, that's right. We're going to remove your armor. We never got around to that. Have, uh... You want to you explore that any further? He looks at you for a very long time, his expression as unreadable as ever. Though we are encouraged to couple and mate within the Legion, Ew. I don't consider you one of my cohorts. I think I'll decline. What? Dude, come on, you knew what I was talking about. The answer would be different if I was disfavored. No, I don't care about that. That wasn't what I was talking about. You weren't. Uh, forgive me. It's been some time since anyone made an advance, and I'm long out of practice, as you can see. He's being intentionally difficult, I think. He knows that we've been trying to get his armor off, which it does sound kind of dirty now that I now that I hear myself say it. <laughs> he knocks on his iron codpiece with a resounding clang. Hmm. Okie doke. Sure, you go ahead and do that, Beric, you weirdo. <laughs> That's what I do when I'm trying to attract a lady. I bang my crotch with a resounding clang. 
What the hell? Suffice it to say, my armor and I will not be separated for the time being. But when the war is over, perhaps Tunon will lend me one of his forge bound. <laughs> my Until secret. then, here I remain. Here I remain. My armor saved me from the destruction of Stalwart, where thousands of others lost their lives. So you can see why I continue to wear it. For the time being, we will not be separated. Jezza, we were just talking about how we attract members of the opposite sex. Namely by wailing away on our cod pieces. Oh yeah, banging crotches. Um, do you even want it removed? Okay, I'm, I'm reading this now. I would not speak of this now, Fatefinder. Please, consider the topic closed. I'm just concerned about the state of your uniform. Let's be diplomatic. Damn it. You are right to be concerned. My apology is that you needed to pull rank. It was wrong of me to withhold information. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how chimps attract mates. Just like, huh? Hmm? Come on, look, look what I'm working with here. I rolled a 20 on dick size. <laughs> that's a callback. That's an old callback. I don't know that chimps ever play D&D, but... I don't need to tell you that this suit of junk is a literal pain in my ass. Half broken, smelling of a midden, perpetually jabbing my side with some Kairos be damned caltrip. These dusty plates may not be up to standard, but they serve the disfavored well enough on the battlefield, if only to intimidate the enemy. Better for me to endure this condition than to shirk an advantage. Considering that I wore this as I marched across the bones of stalwart that was, my burden growing heavier with each step. I have no desire to leave it behind. It's a lesson, a reminder, and, yes, a prison. But all of those things make it something more. These plates have something of me in them. They are as wicked as a bramble patch, as stubborn as a fortress, and hopelessly flawed. At present, removing my armor is not an option. If that ever changes, I suspect that the tears will tremble with the impact of my collapsing fortification. What a day that will be. Okay, at present, it's not an option. All right. Have you spoken with Graven Ash of your predicament? I suspect he doesn't think of it at all, says Beric. Not to be smirched, the great general. He has larger matters to consider than any one soldier's woes. His shrug sends a puff of debris clattering to the ground. <laughs> kind of reminds me of Korg from uh, Ragnarok. Little bits of rock falling off of him. Oh, there's another one. Go on. Tell me about what you can and can't do. I don't think I want to know. Uh, how long do you think this armor can last? The armor hasn't shown any sign of weakening, he says, and my maintenance regimen is all that keeps it from rusting solid. Were I, were I to uh, stop applying oil and give in to entropy... He oils his armor. Jeez, what a... Oh, that must suck. This shell would harden to a degree that no forge master has ever seen. I think it could very well stand for as long as the old walls, with my skeleton peering out from the depths. Someday, not even that. Now isn't that a cheery thought, says Verse. Are you comfortable in there? I have somehow developed even enough calluses that I can sleep at night, but I wouldn't call that comfort, would you? I'm just thinking about, like, when I was a teenager, I fell asleep on the couch one time with uh, my tennis shoes on. And I slept for maybe 45 minutes, and when I woke up, my feet hurt worse than going on like a two-mile hike imagine trying to sleep in a giant metal suit of armor gators on time right on time for the first tangent just sounds awful to me trying to sleep in that that'd be awful this is my armor it has everything it needs and more purpose meaning strength if it were comfortable, that would only take away from its other qualities. All right, let's talk of something else. Um, have either of you noticed that you fight particularly well together? I thought we talked about this. The thought has crossed my mind from time to time. During the many battles of the conquest, Good evening, we Gator, found ourselves standing back oh. to back with enemies on all sides on more than one occasion. Yes. The big guy here is as useless as an empty scabbard without his phalanx to keep him alive, but I move fast enough to compensate for it. And it's nice having a living wall of rusted iron I can use for cover. Skater's entrance ceremony. 
If I ever give us a tangent, a do a tangent before Gator gets here, then I have I have erred. It's my fault. Diesel Martin. Hey, thanks very much for stopping in. I appreciate it, and thanks for the kind words. That's very that's very kind of you. Um, yeah. If you can't hang around for very long, that's cool. But uh, I appreciate you stopping in. Uh, well, so they what? They have a thing. Oh. All right, that's it. That's all we're going to talk about. Let's talk about. Let's talk to Verse then. She's not going to read any of these lines. Apparently, I'm going to read them for her. You've carved a real knack for you. You can almost feel them. <laughs> I'm in the astral plane. I feel Pem is going on a tangent. I better log in. Carved out a real knack for yourself by breaking the Overlord's edicts left and right. Whatever Tunan is paying you for your services, I'd say you're due for a raise. How does it feel? Not only have you given voice to the Overlord's will, but you're breaking Kairos' magic left and right. I'm gonna say that I'm... Okay, cool, Martin. Yeah, you hang out as long as you can, man. Only serving the interests of the mission. Sticking to your priorities is a good way to stay alive, says Verse, but I wonder if you should be more reckless. I never got anywhere by playing it safe. I'm here if you need me, but I don't have a mind for arcane wisdom. I'll do whatever I can to get our little gang through this war, and if it ever looks like your strength is flagging, I'll put you out of your misery and take control. <laughs> Cheer up. Hmm. Yeah, that makes me feel better. What do you need? Hmm. What do you think of those who defy Kairos' authority, given that I'm kind of considering that? She says that... She shrugs apparently the tearsmen can either fight or submit to kairos's peace and only one of those options captures my interest i suppose i appreciate when they go down fighting if they did otherwise i would need to find another excuse to flay them they need to understand she continues whether we unify the tears under a shared banner or at the bottom of a mass grave makes little difference to you me or kairos notable battles she says, I spent some time in Azur toward the end of the war. The beastmen ripped my unit apart. We thought they might be working under Cairn's orders, but we never found out for sure. Interesting view of the conquest. It's a pragmatic one anyway, she says. The Scarlet Chorus caught on to the idea that uh, at the beginning of the campaign. If no one objects that we're here to carve a bloody path for gain and amusement, by all accounts, that is our purpose. Besides, unification is such a vague concept that Kairos allows the disfavored and the chorus to interpret it, uh, interpret it as they will. The Overlord is concerned with results. <laughs> Damn it. He's a results man. Or woman. I'm happy to focus on the details, especially if that means getting uh, cutting off a farmer's legs while his family watches their land burn. Wow. She smiles at a pleasing memory. Forget how much of a monster versus. I like her so much uh, just as a fighting companion, but oof. Hmm. Number one is the more diplomatic answer. No shame in taking pleasure in your work, Verse. No? No, there isn't. He's gone all reminiscent on us. Fatebinder, I suspect that we're going to make something great together. A line of bodies stretching as far as the old walls. It's going to be beautiful. She looks at you with renewed interest. Ooh. Subject change? Um... Ask about our travels, I suppose. What did you have in mind? Present circumstances? I don't know in what brain addled state you thought the disfavored were the army to support, but I see you're committed to it. Of course, you're free to do as you like. Zigzagging around the tiers, pissing off authorities as we go, I suppose there are worse ways to occupy one's time. Any particular reason you've chosen to travel with me? What? Did you have something in mind? It isn't that I'm not flattered, Fatebinder. I just don't think I'm your type. Wait, asking why are you traveling with me? She thinks I'm hitting on her? I don't have a gang anymore, and I wouldn't throw in my lot with any of the killers floating around the Scarlet Chorus ranks. The fact of the matter is you're doing important work, even if you stumble and flail along the way. Yeah, I suppose no group is as good to travel with as the fine-ass gang. If that puts me at odds with my Scarlet Chorus ties, so be it. 
I'm not such a camp follower that I don't look after my interests first. And I find you... interesting. You've satisfied your curiosity, so let me satisfy mine. Why are you keeping a little scrap of a thing like me around? Hmm. I consider us friends. Don't I, I, I didn't, didn't know there were going to be romantic options. I, I'm assuming that's where this goes. But we've already seen a couple different times that she and Barrack have a thing. Or some, you know, maybe it's latent, maybe it's under the surface, but... I think Violin would be diplomatic enough not to throw a wrench in that. I consider us friends, don't you? Oh, boy. We're getting into that territory, are we? Look, I know that folks tend to buddy up when they're in a camp together, but I'm not really friend material. I hate to let you down, but that's the long and short of it. She doesn't want to be my friend. I can promise you I'll stay loyal to your cause for as long as you'll have me. But I can't promise that we'll share anything more intimate than a stiff drink when all this is over. Deal? Even ambition... Uh, am, uh, no, not ambition. What's the word I'm looking for? Wannabe archons like me need friends first. Alright, fine. What do you think of our travel companions? In particular, how about um, Siren first? Take this in the spirit in which it's intended. It's intended. If I had her kind of power at that age, the last thing I would do is take orders from you. You may think you're leading her around, but it might be the opposite. Would any of us even know the difference? All I need to know about Siren is that she scares Kairos. That, that pretty much says it all. What do you think of Ebb? It's easy to respect someone who brings that much passion to a battle. Even so, when she gets to talking about pushing Kairos out of the tears, she makes me want to carve my opinions on the matter across her back. Okay. Kills in Shadow? I've been watching her fight. She's fierce in a way that the Scarlet Chorus could use to our advantage. We've tried to conscript Beastmen in the past, but the results have been less than successful. In truth, the results have been ugly. It's tough to capture something that a net won't hold. As often as not, we either have to talk her kind into conscripting, or murder enough of them, that only the weak are left. Barrack? He's... well, I'll give him some due credit. He's more complicated than he looks. He's still an intolerant and unapologetic bastard. That's more his business than mine. Lantry? I've been meaning to ask you about him. Lantry is talkative, reads when he isn't writing, and brings as much to the battlefield as a sick bird. <laughs> I'll agree with that assessment. He's always the first one to fall, is Lantry. The warriors at your side shouldn't suffer from Elder's ache in their sword arm. You'd be better served by putting him out of his misery. I don't know if I consider him a friend. We need him, that's all you need to know. Understood, she says. You got something in mind you're using him to accomplish? Then by all means, let him tag along. But don't expect me to keep him alive. If he's pulling his weight somehow, feel free to clue me in, because I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Likewise, verse. Um, Go ahead, Fate Finder. Connection with Barrack? You've just got to know, don't you? Ooh, yeah, <laughs> I suppose there's no point in hiding it. Barrack and I are siblings. And we share a father, if, if little else. What? That came out of fucking left field. They're siblings? How the fuck are they siblings? Did they even... I guess they knew each other before we met them, but... What? <laughs> what the hell? This is completely out of nowhere. Okay, share a father. I'm assuming she means this literally, like they they are half half siblings. I try not to think too much about some northern merchant dropping anchor in my mother's port. God, but you it got happened. me, game. And the fortunate result stands proudly before you. Why didn't you tell me? That's not an option. The, I don't have the option of like, hey, what the fuck? How can I, how have I fought this? I've been with you guys for months. I've never let them leave the party even. They're always in the party together. How did this never come up? How did you two become aware of this? There were a lot of lazy days during the conquest. And among other things, I spent my off hours using messenger birds as target practice. 
<laughs> you should have seen Ash's anger when he heard that was going on. Okay, hang on. Maybe this is something that I'm forgetting from the very beginning of the game. Verse was apparently hanging out with the disfavored all during the conquest. She wasn't with the sacred chorus, even though she is a sacred chorus person. Is that why we meet her right away at the beginning of the game when we arrive in Medrian's well? No, the sacred chorus was there then too. I don't... I'm confused. She was apparently around Graven Ash enough that she pissed him off because she was killing messenger birds. One day, I snagged a bird that flew from the hands of a proud northern daddy. The missive was about the goings-on at the family farm. I recognized the name and handwriting from a note in my mother's belongings. You can't even read! How... <laughs> I feel like the game forgot what the game had said previously. She can't read. How is she recognizing handwriting? Yeah, okay. I mean, maybe you could tell the difference between handwriting even if you're illiterate. I suppose that's possible. But, I don't know. Seems like if you're illiterate, you probably don't spend a lot of time staring at handwriting. So, why would you have studied it enough to know that it's different handwriting? I don't know. And he gets two cards. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He does read the cue. There's the, the Little Miss Springfield pageant. He's reading the cue cards. He's like, uh, what does I say? Because he says, I'm here to get the no girl know the girl's personality. I mean, personally. Because he reads the cue card wrong. Huh. There weren't too many people named Barrack in the army, so, so weird. tracking him down was no challenge. I cornered him in camp, and we shared a few heated words. Some blackmail, even. She tried to extort rings from me, and I was having none of it. Not even Graven Ash would think less of me for our father's indiscretion. Okay. I like your confidence, but my ring belt is feeling a little light these days. Maybe you want to take me up on that offer, or I can start whispering in disfavored ears. Think about it. So wait, what's the scandal here, then? That she would blackmail Barrack. Barrack does not want anybody to know that his father slept with whoever Versus mother is. That's the scandal? Does his favorite care about that kind of shit? I know that they're all like more disciplined and everything than the Sacred Chorus, but do they care if you're a bastard? I don't know. If you're I mean if you're a soldier, you're a soldier. I would think. Dis oh, so his father perhaps being a disfavored would have broken the rules by um, gallivanting around with some non-disfavored lady, huh? Do you even like each other? I thought you did like each other. I've tried to get along with that ironclad knot of repression, but it would seem he's having none of it. Good riddance, then. The war has tossed us together, but nothing says we have to keep that going. The most we do for each other is try not to get the other one killed, which is more than you can say for most disfavored in Scarlet Chorus. How has this affected you, Beric? Well, Verse has a nasty habit of jabbering in my ear and making this war intolerable. I plan on parting ways and returning to the North at first convenience. My father will answer for his infidelity. Okay, that's the concern there, is that your father was uh, unfaithful. Beyond that... I am happy to consider myself in every way unaffected. My superiors once accused me of having an impulsive streak, but I have worked to suppress it at every turn. Okay. When you go back home, send father my fondest greetings and thanks. If he hadn't gone to ground on my mother's dry dock, I might not be here today. Okay. So... The dynamic between these two siblings kind of matches the dynamic of the two separate armies themselves, right? Beric is uh, the legitimate child of a marriage, which generally is more orderly, more acceptable, more culturally appropriate, versus a bastard 
um, from uh, an episode of Cheating, grew up apparently like the daughter of a wharf hooker, <laughs> a hooker on the, on the docks. Uh, rough and tumble, more like had to make it her own way kind of thing. Perhaps a, a chip on her shoulder for not having her father around, that kind of thing. That yeah, kind of fits the the dynamic. I feel like the two separate armies represent. I know, Gator. I'm confused too. I, I presume that she had somebody else read the note, but she just said that she was shooting down messenger birds left and right, having a grand old time. And then one day she shot down a bird that happened to have a note that she recognized the handwriting of. So does that mean that she was looking at all of the notes? Was she reading all the messages or looking at all the messages and having somebody read it? Like, hey, what does this message say of this bird I just shot down? Or is it just coincidence? Like she was just having fun shooting down birds. And then one day she picked one random letter to read of all the ones that she had shot down. And it just happened to have handwriting that she recognized. I don't know. This is very unusual. Not at all was what I was expecting. My heritage was a point of pride and distinction before I met you, Verse. Not that you would care. Any significant impact, Verse? Don't know what this is asking, but okay. I've asked myself about that several times, but... Unfortunately, I don't have what you'd call a definitive answer. The Northerners put a lot of meaning behind family and blood. It seems arbitrary to me, but I don't want to discredit it entirely. Hmm. There have been times when I acted strangely on the battlefield and could find no reason why, or gotten distracted and had thoughts I couldn't explain. What does this have to do with you and Barrett? I suppose there's no telling for sure, but if I had to guess... Yeah. Sometimes I get messed up in my head, and okay. learning I had a brother has helped me understand that better. Wait, you had bizarre thoughts in your head sometimes on the battlefield, and now that you know you have a brother that helps explain that? I'm just not following this at all. Very strange. Uh, so a little bit of here's an anthropology tangent for you, Gator. So I believe this is still understood to be true. At least it was it was the general consensus in anthropology when I was in college when I was studying the thing. When you have siblings who grew up separated, <laughs> thanks, Mike. I don't feel so alone. When you when you have siblings that grew up separated, if they meet each other as adults, it's very common for them to feel a very strong attraction to each other, like an actual like sexual attraction. Um, and we don't really know why that is. The thinking is that they're it's um, you're attracted to people who look like you, who who resemble you to a certain degree, uh, kind of a sameness, which might help explain it. Um, and then the, the thinking is that it's during the process of growing up together, like being children together, that kind of like mentally, psychologically turns off the ability to find them sexually attractive as a partner as you grow up. But having not grown up together, you don't ever have that switch turned off. <laughs> and so when you kind of know each other as adults, it's not uncommon for like siblings who encounter each other as adults to be attracted to each other, which is kind of a weird freaking thing to have to deal with, I can imagine. Anyway, just a thought, because they, they do, earlier in the game, and up to when they said that they were secret siblings, I thought that they were intimating there was a burgeoning romantic relationship between these two. And now here they're like, oh, by the way, we've been brother and sister the whole time and never told you. It's like, what the fuck? Okay. Uh, what, what else we get to talk about? Are you a spy? What else are you hiding from me? If you've been a secret brother to one of my soldiers, you might also be a spy. First regards you with an unreadable expression. Her mismatched eyes look at each other, each of yours in turn. Her mismatched eyes? Does she have heterochromia or something? I can't, I can't tell. This is not zoomed in enough. Wait a minute. Does she have heterochromia? Now I want to look at her uh, inventory picture her portrait <gasps> she reveals because of her loyalty to me i was and to be perfectly fair i think i've been more or less transparent about it but that doesn't change anything about why i chose to travel with you if i didn't want to i'd just leave what did the voices want to know 
You never told me, she says. He just said to keep an eye on you, but there was an implication that I'd have an opportunity to report in, as if I would have. More likely, he would have stolen my mind and learned everything I knew, just to make sure I didn't leave anything out. So if you have any reservations about my discretion, keep that in mind. Stolen my mind? Is that how the voices of Narat became the voices of Narat? He, like, takes people's souls, their, their minds? Is that why he's technically more than one person? Voices instead of just one dude? Right? Ugh. Weird. That introduces a new element to having to eventually... I assume we'll eventually have to fight him. That could be weird if he could just swallow our soul. Um... I'm going to say no harm, because first it's just that cool. Well, I'm grateful that we don't have to make a big deal about it and waste our time wondering if we can ever trust each other again. Honestly, it's refreshing. Care to duel? I'm assuming this will be like when we dueled with uh, Kills and Shadows. Just kind of a, I would think, a kind of camaraderie thing rather than like a dominance thing. That would be an understatement, and I thought you'd never ask. Okay. Since you're obviously at a huge disadvantage, I'll let you pick our weapon of choice. Hmm. Dual-wielding knives. I am not a melee fighter. I don't play with bows, but I do throw javelins, so maybe I'd be better off with the ranged weapon. Of course, she's also good with bows. Let's try it. Ranged weapons it is. If you want to risk becoming a pincushion, it's your funeral. But you're right about one thing. This will be fun. Okay, let's see how this goes. I gained five bow skill ranks. <laughs> oh, I am not very good at bows at all. You take turns loosing blunted arrows, using each other as moving targets. Verse is an accomplished runner and swats the few projectiles that get close out of the air. When her turn arrives, it takes all of your energy to keep up with her relentless volley of projectiles. You observe her technique and take a valuable lesson to heart. You held your own. Call me impressed. Need anything else, or did I tire you out? Maybe there was a sexual thing going on between me and Verse, and I just didn't know it because I thought she and Beric were into each other. Um, no, I think we'll talk again later. Well, that conversation threw me for a freaking loop. Uh, just quick saving here before we go. No can do. Oh, shut up. Here we go. Talk to old uh, Grouchy Pants. What's his name? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, 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 Graven Ash. There we go. What? Huh? What's this? These reports list all known Scarlet Course outposts and strongholds, as well as troop compositions. It's safe to assume that Graven Ash has his own eyes and used them in the ranks of his enemies. Holy crap, were all these guys here before? I feel like they weren't. Must be getting ready to mobilize, huh? Graven Ash says, Fate Binder, I felt something indescribable pass through me just before your arrival. <laughs> <laughs> passed through me. It makes it sound like you had a bowel movement. It was indescribable. Motions of great rage and pain, followed by a moment of lingering sorrow. I suspect that something has been lost in Taratus herself, strains of the absence. Ash winces and rubs his brow. I understand that both of the spires jutting up from the ruins of Azur are now under your control. It would seem that impossible feats are no mystery to the likes of you. Impressive for Tunan's minion. Do not allow yourself to be swept up in the esteem and glory of this achievement. Were you a soldier of mine, I would temper your pride with modesty. Hmm. What would you do with the spire under your authority? Why, is one of yours for sale? He says. I would have masons study the stonework and expand it into a mighty fortress, unassailable, wreathed by earth shakers, their powers augmented by the very presence of the ancient structure. When this conflict is finally over, I imagine the fate of your spires will be a topic of great discussion. Uh, the disfavored and earth shakers were triumphant with my considerable help, Graven Ash, and have managed to destroy Cairn. 
the Archon of Stone. Fallen. Ash turns his gaze out to Iron Hearth, settling it on nothing. Look at that. Look at that stare. That's a that's the stare of a general right there. I thank you, Fatebinder, he continues. This was a long time coming. Karen's betrayal was inexcusable, and a death sentence from a lawful hand is no more or less than he deserved. What's more, you are to be commended for resolving an Edict of Kairos and putting down an Archon at once. He pulls on the end of his beard and frowns. Seems like he's completely forgotten that I killed his daughter and grandchild. Speaking of ending Edicts, okay. You don't sound too pleased about this. I do not always find war pleasing, he says, especially in these dark days. When it is thrust upon me, and former allies show their true colors, at times I want nothing more than to see home again, but even home has its memories. I would never have called the Archon of Stone a friend. Karen was a difficult man to know. Well, that and he was like 60 feet tall. Imagine he probably had to have a bullhorn just to talk to him. Taciturn and removed, keeping to himself as often as not. But we had much in common. When you are an Archon, you're an Archon all the way. From your first cigarette to your last dying day. When you're an Archon, that is a quality you learn to cherish in others. So no, I am not pleased. I make no secret of it. I am sorrowful and cruel. <laughs> what? Cruel? What does that have to do with anything? Even though the Archon needed to die, that does not stop me from wishing it were otherwise. Saying like, oh man, I'm not pleased about that. That's regretful. I make no secret of it. I am sorrowful and cruel. Like, hey, hey, I heard your cat died. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's hard to deal with. I am sorrowful and cruel. What? what? Uh, next order of business. Karen was simply another pest to swat on my path to great. Yeah, no, nah, let's not do that. Let's not challenge him. Have my doubts about starving the Car Scarlet Chorus. Nah, I don't have any doubts about that. We did it. It's fine. On to the next order of business. What happens to the Scarlet Chorus from here, sir? He says, The crops grown for our enemies will have withered on the vine. But uh, by now, the Archon's forces are clutching their stomachs and tightening their belts as we starve them out. Ash stands tall and beams at the thought. The party's received Ash's finery. Stone Sea region is now controlled by the disfavored. Okay. He continues, a fair reward for more than fair service to the Legion. Ash nods with gratitude and hands you a heavy hammer wrapped in cloth. The Earthshakers and Forgebound conceived of this, and I can think of no wielder more deserving than you, Fatebinder. Uh-oh. <laughs> Message from the front, sir! Lysander says, Fatebinder! Breathless, the officer snaps to attention. No time for pleasantries or ceremony. <sighs> Your spires... <sighs> Under attack! The Scarlet Corps have ramped up their offensive, and they mean to topple your stronghold. With you atop it, if need be. Which spire, dude? There's five of them. Raven Ash says, I feared something like this might happen. An act of desperation from the voices of Narat. He's either too much of a coward to attack Iron Hearth, or his forces are too weak. Either way, you'll need to answer this threat with blood. Are you lying to me? Why would I suspect the soldier of lying to me? Carried out your task with distinction. Well done. My thanks, Fate Binder. Rep it, saw. Best of luck at your spire. Oh, all right. Guess I'm just gonna go to the spire. Return to oh, Vendrin's well. Back where it all began, huh? Wow, 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 wow. Is it showing me playing prey? Son of a crapping bitch. Dang, I thought I changed it. I guess I didn't. Stand by. I typed in tyranny, but I guess I didn't hit done or something. There, now it's tyranny, right? Yeah, there we go. I swear that's exactly what I did when I first started, but it didn't take. Thanks for letting me know, Walter. And we got a missive as well. Oh, two of them. Status report, Fate Binder. You are to report to the Bastard City at once. Be prompt, lest I mistake your tardiness for reluctance. I'll just send a confirmation. As you request, I will appear, appear at your court in good time. Wait, what was my... What was my 
Swear combination. I didn't. I didn't. Didn't even pay attention. Swears tend to come out uh, completely unplanned by me. Dear Fatebinder Violin the Fourth, who is this from? Fatebinder Rogos, son of a crapping bitch. <laughs> hey, you're right. That's pretty good. I like that. You ended an edict. Now you have ended an archon. I know none in this court had such expectations for you when the adjudicator initially brought you among us. So many surprises in so short a span. You fascinate. While he lived, Karen was a singular being, a titanic man born of the womb of Taratus herself. To hear some tell it. While none still living can provide account to that birth, you bore witness to his demise. Indeed, you precipitated it. I ask that you indulge my scholar's curiosity. What passed between you and the Archon of Stone in those final moments? Did the ground tear itself asunder as a window rends, widow rends her garments? Did the mountains groan a panegyric to their champion? Were there any final words from Cairn, spoken or inscribed? Does the crystal that reportedly protrudes from the cliff faces throughout Azure still glimmer, or has it darkened? I watch eagerly for your bird, Fatebinder Rogulus. Um... Let's just describe the Blight of Land. Why would I lie? Um, Fatebinder Rogulus, how does one depict the death throes of a nation? In the Edict of Stone, Kairos consigned Cairn to his doom, but in their ritual, the Earthshakers spread that execution across the entire region. The life drained from the soil even as it faded from Cairn's eyes. One could verily feel the stone trying to leech my own life from me as if I'd eaten stale bread when I already thirsted for a flagon. We marked this place, and it may never recover. Cool. All right. Well, probably need to go see Tunan first, huh? I mean, he is. Uh, Voices of Narat is attacking my. I'd have it no other way. My very first spire. Pretty sure the spire can handle it. I think we'll just go um, go to the Bastard City first. Get to the Spire when we can. I'm out of booze. Oh well. Gotta drink some water then. Right. So then two places to go, huh? Vendrian's Well and the Bastard City. Neither one of these are lit up, though. That's interesting. To Tunan's Court it is. Three days, seven... Oh my god. The Spire could be gone by then. Alright, fine. So we <laughs> Look, we're teleporting to the Vendrian's Well Spire and then leaving it, apparently. Encounter in the Blade Grave. A long road, uh, along a road, sneaking uncomfortably close to the ancient old walls, you encounter a sign. Splashed across a rock in a thick, tacky red paint, you see a crude pictograph of the kind often made by the semi-literate commoners of the tiers to communicate basic information. In this case, the message behind the angry mass, shapeless save for its claws and hateful eyes, couldn't be clearer. The bane had been sighted nearby. You could tread carefully and continue towards your destination, or you could make sure this stretch of well-used road remains clear of the Bane's, act, uh, Bane's depredations. I mean, we got places to be. I don't think we can afford it. Let's just ignore him. You put the Bane... Lost fear with Siren, Verse, and Barrack. Okay. Put the Bane out of your mind and continue on your journey. It's funny, we're teleporting to the Spire and then being like, oh! See ya, Voices of Narat and Sacred Forest. We're gonna go walk right past you to the Bastard City. Okay, what's happening here? <gasps> it's Bladen Mark. So, you found the Azure Shield. You're now the inheritor of one of the tier's most prized relics. Thank you. Assuming you remember half of what I've taught you, there should be a few left in the tiers that could best you in a duel. Way to go, kid. Thank you. Can I talk about anything else? Is there a reason you're gaping at me like I just gutted you, kid? 
Or do you just like to stand around and stare? Uh, the bracer you're wearing is rather eye-catching, I guess? Hmm. I bet you were thinking something like it would look even better on you, right, kid? This? He waved his left arm in the air, examining the blacker-than-black bracer. A strapping armlet that appears simultaneously solid as obsidian and diaphanous as a sigh. Almost a living, pulsing thing. That'd be my binding of shadows. Want it? You just give it to me? Why? Try it on and find out. He grins. Teeth stark, flat, and wide. I like you, kid. I wouldn't steer you wrong. All right. Hand it over. With a gruff grunt and some difficulty, he ratchets the bracer off. So it is solid after all and tosses it to you one-handed careful with it he warns when you accept the gift not only weapons can be double-edged swords okay what the hell hang on wait wait wait. we also got an axe from uh graven ash didn't we what the hell is that ashes finery Hmm. Ash's finery is not as good as the awesome uh, hammer, the axe that uh, Beric already has. Okay, what about the witchmajigger that Weeping Whispers? This one. Oh, it's armor. I was thinking it was going to be a trinket, charm, whatever the hell they're called. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Quicken the dead. Blast of baleful energy, thick with versus hatred for those who killed her. No, that's versus thing. What? Why doesn't verse have that on? Oh, because it's not actually that good. But it is an artifact, so yes. Yeah, Shiny, I like on. it. Gives us a cool ability, maybe. Um, ashes finery. Binding of Shadows. This is what I was looking for. This is also not a trinket. It's heavy armor. Um, shadows Embrace. So it's better armor, slower recovery, better unarmed DPS, which doesn't affect me at all. Less deflection, less precision. Uh, we'll give you Shadows Embrace. Shift into a shadow version of yourself. While in this form... Deal bonus arcane damage with each attack and gain bonus damage reduction. The effects scale with the Binding of Shadows right now. Okay, that might be worth it. This bracer, once worn by Blade and Mark, is made by uh, uh, bleh, 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 made of an unfamiliar substance. Part velvet, soft darkness, and part hardened insect chitin. It is said that the darkness is more oppressive when the Archon of Shadows walks the face of Tyrannus. The magic stemming from his power draws on the substance of shadows with an air of welcome and invitation, treating the dark less as something more than an arcane force. That's a weird sentence. Treating the dark less as something more than an arcane force. All right. As such, a bracer that allows the wearer to embody their darker self has overtones of danger and risk. Just looking at it too closely causes your vision to swim and sends a wave of nausea rolling through your gut well replace weeping whispers yeah i lose all that deflection nope that's first hang on um i think i would wear this right so it's better armor slightly slower recovery i do lose six deflection though and i lose four precision let's try it it's freaking blade and marks. It's got to be awesome. And it gives us a cool new ability. Right? Shadows Embrace. And the Quick and the Dead. Okie doke. And then we got a uh, missive uh, from Tunan. Excellent. We await your return. Hey, guess what, buddy? We're here. And uh, Rogalus wrote us back. Unless I'm mistaken, and I am very rarely mistaken, I detect in your words remorse. Empathy, though an admirable trait, is wasted on the undeserving. 
One profits from fretting over the fates of the seditious no more than one profits from concern for the pain and suffer, uh, pain suffered by the murderer consigned to the headman's axe. Kairos has branded greater lands than Azur with the lingering effects of edicts. We celebrate no such oh, we celebrate such destruction no more than we celebrate a verdict of guilt. They are no more and no less than the currency by which we purchase order and peace. Thank you for your response and your continued service. Oh, Kidok. Whoops. Let's see, we got anybody here we need to talk to? These are all just regular old people, right? Lady Lucretius, anything new? Whoops. Shit, sorry. Fatebinder, we have nothing further to discuss. Any petitioners that is pleased to now would meet their fate in the pits? The court below. Carousel standard, an imposing sign for both conquered and unconquered alike. Rogalus, Calio, and Nunaval. We have spoken to all of them. Oh, Sevius, Aurora, and Albatronus are here. I haven't spoken to them in a while. Didn't think I'd make it out of that pass alive. You've done well for the Legion, Fatebinder. Savius says, anything beats a prolonged siege, eh, Fatebinder? Enjoy the war while you can. Hey, Lash and Kairos. Who's this bloke? Just an officer. The nobles are getting restless. Keeping the peace is a real challenge. He said to no one in particular. Ah, right. And the sacred course is over here. Mocking Blaze, Pitcher Quip, and Blood Mulch. Kairos will is indomitable. He ignores you with a stern and distant expression. That was a uh, bitter quip, I suppose. A curious man, this Tunan. Age has not made him as nihilistic as the voices of Murat. Okay, let's talk to these dudes, see what they got to say. We speak again, says Nunaval. So let us speak genuinely and at length with one another. Now, of what matter would you have us discuss? Fatebinder rubs his fingers along the edge of his jaw, regarding you with interest. This is going to be a whole nother uh, episode of Streaming Tyranny that's going to be just talking, I think. There's nothing new to say. Alright. Calio, anything new to say? Yes. Have you been spying on me? Don't act so surprised, she says. It's my duty to ensure that those who operate under the adjudicator's name adhere to the spirit of his law, if not the very letter. It is very di- yeah, I don't mind that. It's just uh, when it's multiple streams in a row, I kind of feel like maybe it's a little boring. Um, of course, I have nothing to hide. So you say, she says. But I have to weigh all evidence presented before me with an objective eye. Assume you are being watched, Fatebinder, but don't concern yourself. That's no more than any citizen of the Empire can expect. You wrote that you could illuminate the darker corners of Terratus. There's nothing to say. Yeah. Yeah, all right. You're right. Calio glances at your cadre. In a private missive, yes. Wait, what did I ask her? Illuminate the dark corners of trust. There are things I won't discuss within the hearing of outside ears. I need to speak privately, please. Siren rolls her eyes. As if I had any interest at all in this gossip. Pardon me while I find an actual conversation to engage in. Perhaps on the, on the inadequacies of a livery in which the adjudicator garbs his puffed-up gesture. Jesters. She stalks off. You're lucky you're a... Uh, Archon, Siren. Beric shrugs. As you wish. He takes up a position outside of hearing range, standing just shy of at attention. Suit yourself, says Ferris. She moves lightly away, footsteps soundless on the marble floor. A sly smile dimples Calio's left cheek. I confess to no small amount of curiosity. I peek into my share of shadows, and sometimes I scrounge up a secret. What excites your interest? Hmm. Oh, I was thinking I could ask her about the spires. But okay. Uh, Archons and their forces. Entirely understandable, given the circumstances. How can I enlighten you? Do I care? about any of this what makes the archons a, uh, different from other magicians I guess I do care about that 
Isn't that a question better suited to our esteemed fate binder, Rogalis? She smirks. Since you're asking me, I assume you want a practical answer rather than an academic lecture. My thoughts. Magicians merely imitate. They take the Archon's sigils, study them for secrets, tweak and twist them, experiment with them, and commit the various forms they can take to memory. Through rote practice, they learn to perform specific and discrete events. Archons, however, have neither such recourse nor similar limitation. Their power comes from within, not some external template. Excuse me. Each Archon manifests their own peculiar talents, sometimes abilities never before seen, sometimes twists on powers that have been seen in the past. Further, those abilities can change over time, becoming more potent and flexible. How does one become an Archon? What conjunction of occurrences births their abilities? From what well do they draw when they manifest their will within the world? All questions outside of my purview. Perhaps Rogalus or the Adjudicator could speak more on these subjects, those subjects. And of course, there's always the Archon of Song. Given the lack of discipline with which she speaks, she may be the best possible avenue for this inquiry. Oh, okay. What exactly happened with Cairn? You mean, why were you tasked to kill him? Her nose wrinkles slightly. On one hand, everybody knows, but on the other, nobody's really sure. She grins. Confused? So, at its core, the situation was this. Cairn could barely be considered loyal to the Overlord at the best of times. He wasn't so foolish as to stand directly against Kairos, but he always did the absolute minimum necessary to avoid Blade and Mark's blades. Or his withering frowns, anyway. Cairn was one Archon that Blade and Mark couldn't easily kill. How do you stab a giant stone? I presume this is why an edict was used to end Cairn. Hmm. What was the final straw? What caused him to disregard orders entirely and start running with the Beastmen in Azur? I don't have that answer. I'm not sure that anybody does, but I can tell you with some confidence what finally convinced Kairos that an example needed to be made of him. He suggested that the Overlord had no claim on the tears. Hard to say whether he said it to anyone other than Tunan and the Beasts, but that was enough. Hmm. What abilities does Archon Tunan possess? Beyond his brilliant legal mind, peerless literacy, and unrivaled taste in robes? She emits a quiet, abbreviated chuckle. Nobody knows. The adjudicator's most infamous abilities are his judgments, terrible sentences that carry mystical weight from encasing an individual in a block of ice to cursing someone uh, guilty of arson to burst into flames. The only consistent theme of his power is that he only turns his magic on entities he's declared guilty of a criminal act, but who can say if that's his choice? A limitation of the power, or some combination of both. So that's it, he can punish wrongdoers? She lowers her voice further, leaning in. It's been suggested, she shoots a brief glance towards Rogalus, who, involved in a scroll, misses it entirely, that the judgments are somehow related to the Overlord's declared edicts, that because he speaks for Kairos, Archon Tunan can draw on some of that power. I'm not saying I don't believe it, but Cairn could level mountains, too, and his relationship with the Overlord was never particularly cordial. Otherwise, the Archon of Justice doesn't flaunt his abilities. I've heard that he smells the presence of criminal action on an individual. Some say he can see the final moments of a murder victim by drinking the juices of their eyes. Jesus Christ. Others claim he has an ear attuned to threshing truth from falsehood. Of course, the Tearsmen spread the same rumor about us. She chuckles. I don't correct them, either. Hmm. I think that's enough questions about the Archons for now. The rest of Tyrannus? I've done more than a little traveling in my role as Tunan, Tunan's agent. What would you know? What armies does Kairos have? Yeah, let's scout the potential opposition here. That varies depending on the needs of the Empire at any given time. Right now, with the conquest of the Tears ongoing, the Archons of War and Secrets have been given leave to aggressively recruit and field massive forces. Nunaval told me that the Scarlet Chorus is one of the largest gangs of miscreants to have served a single commander in recent history. Archon Ash's disfavored boast better weapons and tighter tactics than most other forces in the Overlord's Dominion can field. Tunan rules the Northern Empire, and while he's at war, his lands are guarded by the Archons of Sorrow and Ruin, as well as the Archons of Frost, unless one of the sisters turn on the others. They are not on a conquest sanctioned by the Overlord, but they maintain personal armies even in times of relative peace. Interesting to hear about Archons outside of the Tears. 
Beyond that? Well, the Overlord has dozens of Archons, most with their own lands, armies, and magical guilds. I've not traveled the entire world myself, but I've heard of everything from phalanxes of living bronze to nearly naked archers who herd swarms of spiders into battle. I'll let you determine how much credence you give them. She grins. I'm partial to the spiders myself. What do you know about how I came to the court's attention? She raises an eyebrow. Have you already forgotten the ill-chosen words that thrust you among our company? Uh... I don't speak of it anymore, I guess. Such is a kind of forgetting. Frankly, I was mildly surprised when the adjudicator concurred with your argument of innocence, and more so when he offered you a place within the court. She shrugs. Perhaps he saw something in your vagabond upbringing. Perhaps he even foresaw some of what you would accomplish. How did you become a fate binder? Oh, I promise you, no story is more boring than that old yarn. Okay, I do hate to be bored. Let's speak of other topics. Uh, what can you tell me of the lands beyond the tiers? Well, across the isthmus north of the Gates of Judgment, you'll find the Northern Empire, which is large enough to be the Middle Empire to some, but there's no accounting for how borders expand over time. From the Northern Empire, there's Cardinalus to the east, the Echolands, and the Romani Protectorate to the south. But I've never journeyed beyond that. Maybe sometime before I die, I'll see the lands far east where Kairos was born. However, I doubt my service to Tunon will ever allow me the luxury of traveling for a few years just to see Tiratus. Northern Empire and Northern Kingdom used interchangeably? That's not exactly a question, but I understand the confusion. Simply put, the Northern Kingdom was the Northern Empire before Kairos claimed it. Both names refer to the same rough geographical area from whence Archon Graven Ash hails. The difference in nomenclature is to distinguish when in history one is discussing. Okay, fine. Like different dynasties, sort of. Enough about Tiratus. Um... Matters arcane. Eh. Lore historical. Eh. Your perspective on the Overlord. A dangerous interest, she says. What questions plague you? What is Kairos? Her head lilts to the right. The Overlord? What do you mean? From where does Kairos' power stem? Political or mystical? Not that. Not that you can uh, truly separate them, I suppose. The political authority comes from the mystical force in conjunction with the military force. Where did the mystical power initially come from? How did the Overlord come to be able to issue edicts? My guess is that only one living person knows those answers, and seeking them could shorten one's life dramatically. Okay, she's not going to tell me very much, then. Uh, that's all I want to know for now. Farewell. Rogalis? Fatebiter, you return. He looks you up and down with an inscrutable expression. Looks like you have a question for me, D'Artagnan. I have nothing to talk to you about. All right. Well, up the stairs we go. Let's talk to the man himself. The Archon of Justice. Tune on, ladies and gentlemen. You return as summoned. Yes. Despite the weight of responsibility on your shoulders. The court appreciates your devotion to our good work. Thank you very much, Trunan, the adjudicator. Yes, I would agree with you, Walter. There were periods of discussion, uh, dialogue, and decisions, and then it was usually... You'd usually have a fight break out right in the middle of one, and then you had to go back to making more decisions. They, they did break that up nicely. It should come as no surprise that your activities are closely monitored. As an extension of Kairos' law in the frontier, your progress is a topic of some interest. I sent you on a mission to bring order to the chaos of this civil war. Not enough time has passed for me to expect any significant progress, but I am curious about your findings all the same. I want to make sure your time outside the court's shadow is being used effectively. All right. I understand that you've made a name for yourself in the ranks of the disfavored. Good. With the confidence of his soldiers, you should have no trouble rooting out corruption or chaos in Graven Ash's elite legion. Hmm. I'll say nothing. Do you think that silence shields you from judgment? Wrath. 
Do not insult this court with childish games. What's I supposed to say, dear? Everything's cool. You have spent some time on your own recognizance. The efforts of our military and the challenges they face should be no mystery to you. Tell me, are you any closer to determining which of the Archons is at fault for the troubles of this campaign? So, all this time that's been in our journal. And I thought that there would be some definitive like, aha, here it is. This is the evidence that such and such is guilty or so and so is guilty. But that never really happened. They just listed it all out. I don't know. I mean, clearly we've sided with Graven Ash up until now, so fuck it. Yeah, voices of Nerat. Inciting chaos. He's an asshole. Interesting. On what grounds do you make this claim? Oh, heh. <laughs> grounds. Uh. Hmm. Gave disfavored battle plans to the stalwart defenders. That's true. He did do that. Under the voices orders... Harshion Bronze smuggled iron weapons to the Vendrian Guard. That's also true. Coffee grounds, sir! Have some. Take every opportunity to provoke Graven Ash. He baited the Civil War. That's subterfuge, apparently, because I'm tricking Tunon? Or I have some proof the Archon might be up to something suspicious in the tears. Or, well, just look at him. He's terrifying. Um, I think this is the most treacherous thing right here. His favorite battle plans to stop. Actually, both of these are equally treacherous, but I can't say them both. So, the first one. He gave his favorite battle plans to the stalwart defenders, sir. The adjudicator weighs your statement with interest. The space between the eyes of his mask narrows. Okay, the mask is malleable. Though the change is too gradual for you to follow. So, the narrator noticed that his the space between the eyes of his mask narrows, but I didn't notice. But he's telling me that that they did. But he's also telling me that I didn't notice. <laughs> Thank you, narrator. Material evidence is hallowed to the court. I respect your diligence in collecting it, Fatebinder. Excuse me, me one of these points. To my ambitions of bringing order to this divisive campaign. Be sure that you remember this and any other evidence you identify when you are called upon to present your findings in a more formal manner. This is it, man. I'm here. I'm presenting them right now, dude. I look forward to receiving your full report. I will summon you again at the appropriate time. If there's nothing further, you're dismissed. I'm going to kick his ass right now. This is it, dude. <laughs> what are you... Okay. What about Kairos? No, I don't want to ask him about any of this. I want to get the fuck out of here. I don't know why he brought me here, though, just to say, oh, yes, sir, he cheated once. I got... I have no more questions. Look at this. There's a freaking list. Uh, right here. All this... Actually, there's way more evidence against... Uh, <laughs> against Graven Ash than there is against Voices and Rot. But even so, um... It's a little weird that he's like, okay, give me some evidence that you've collected. I'm like, okay, here's one thing. He's like, hmm, yes, I'll expect you a full report. I'm like, I got a report, dude. It's right here. Let me just tell you all this stuff. It's weird that he called me all the way here. Whoops, I'm hitting the wrong button there. He called me all the way here just to ask me one question, and then he sends me off even though I've collected a whole bunch of other information. It feels like this should have happened in the middle of the game. And then I should have gone out and found more evidence, and then it should have happened again toward the end of the game, or something. It's weird that... Remember this is... years back, when uh, I told you justice is just the name for the biggest sword in the realm? <laughs> Claiming the Dauntless is part of establishing your own might, your own authority. Even if you dislike its heft, I'd advise you to keep the blade close. It has symbolic value beyond its martial applications. Of course, any authority you may be carving for yourself is sanctioned only with the understanding that it's for the greater glory of Kairos. Dauntless. That's a weapon that I have? I thought, uh... Rick Barrick has it, right? Dauntless. Yeah. I'm not using it because it sucks compared to the other stuff I got, sir. But sure, I'll keep that in mind. 
anyway, I was saying I was saying this feels like we're getting to the end game, and that kind of felt like a mid-game conversation I just had with him. <sighs> okay, um, back to the spire then. This is the only place I can go, so sure. Iron Marshal Aranyo says, Greetings, Fatebinder. The Iron Guard salutes you with a clattering salute. Our oath-bound scouts alerted us to a course assault on your spire, and Lord Ash insisted we send aid at once. I've assembled a... Massive sculpture rumbles, shaking the masonry of the spire and sending her, sending her off balance. rut -row. Hey, so that's kind of interesting. There's one, two, three, four, five unlit up emblems around this thing. So that means there's five other spires somewhere in the region that I did not ever discover. Maybe they've been destroyed or something. The orb in the center of the resonator spins with the push of some unseen force. Where the structure once exuded warmth, now it gives off a ferocious heat that singes your face the longer you stare into it. A sound like music swarms in the air around the structure, but it's painful and disharmonious to your ears. Oh. Fallout Boy. <laughs> That's what the, the, the device is broadcasting Fallout Boy. That was a joke. It was a joke. Not a very good one. Siren says, well, this is shit. <laughs> Siren has to shout over the disharmonious music. Siren does not like Fallout Boy. You'd think Aspire would know some better songs, <laughs> but I guess there's no accounting for taste. Ouch. Damn, I think the game was going to rip into Fallout Boy so bad. Whew. She refocuses on you with a mixed expression. You do realize that the energies in this place are all centered on you? I don't know what makes you so special. Get over it. What the hell? The spire is now fully awake. Its long, dormant currents of energy dance to your presence. Oh. This is suddenly becoming very phallic. Iron Marshal Aranios is crouching to the ground to steady herself. She stays low to the ground until the trembling subsides. Subsides. Feels like something is shaking the spire. Of course, can't pull off that sort of magic. What in Kairos' name is going on? Almost has a mind of its own. Um, let's let's try to be as authoritative as possible. As the ruler of this spire, I have a mystic link to this place. Give me a moment, and I'll get to the bottom of this. I don't suppose this magical spire of yours has some warding magic or something of that ilk? Aranios points down toward the chorus troops massing below. Unshakable courage and superior training will only take us so far against that larger force. So this is reminding me that I thought we would get one more opportunity before we f actually got to the end of the game to betray Graven Ash, but we haven't. I think, I think you'll remember when I was last in Lethian's Crossing, there was an option when I came out of the old walls and like all the shit had gone down. I could have betrayed the alliance with the disfavored. And I thought, nah, I won't do it yet. I feel like I'm not ready, but I bet I'll get another opportunity. And I haven't. That was the last chance I got. Spire resonates my voice. I'll shout to the valley that I have an edict from Kairos. That should get them running. Or just let me think. I'll handle this. I don't know that I know this. I'll handle this. With an exasperated shrug, Aranios drops her gaze to her feet. Whatever you're pondering, it better work. Use the resonator! Well, is there any reason why we wouldn't use the resonator? I don't think there is, so let's do it. Mystic hum of the spire pulses to the cadence of your heart. The ancient structure awaits your command. There's still so much that doesn't make sense. Again, I don't know that I know that this is going to be an edict. I don't I don't know why I would think that this gives me the power to declare an edict. What could possibly go wrong? That sounds too flippant. Let's just touch the resonator and concentrate. As you touch the stone structures, 
structure singular. Your sense of the moment slows, and you feel the entirety of the tears at your fingertips. Oh yeah, the acid is kicking in. The spire stands ready to challenge your will. Uh, channel your will. Ooh, hang on, what's this? Use the resonator. You believe this artifact could help repel the enemies laying siege to your citadel. Shit, where did the where did the thing go that I have to do? Here we go. Select a region to view the information about its current edict. No edict. No edict. No edict. Edict of fire. Yeah, I never went there, did I? That would have to be something. An active edict in this region. Uh, okay. What am I doing with this information? the hell? Hmm. I didn't open the screen. It opened the screen when I touched the resonator. Or to issue a new one. Okay, that wasn't there before. But okay. Edict of Storms, Edict of Stone. These other three are locked presumably because i didn't do the things in the game that would allow me to unlock it story decisions i'm guessing so if i were to replay the game as a different character having made different choices in the conquest perhaps siding with the sacred course or betraying everybody maybe i would have had opportunities for other edicts my choices are edict of storms of stone. Leeches magical energy from the sky and living creatures, storing it in the rocks below. This energy can lead to earthquakes and the slow petrification of the living. Party effects. Negative 15 to all magic skills. 30 control to control stone. 20 defense against prone attacks. Periodic rumbles and shifts cause characters to fall prone in combat. All characters have stone magic skill increased. The party gains an increased prone defense. While those have prone durations increased. I see. Hmm. Torrential rain plaguing the land, increasing the power of shock spells and lowering lowers the effectiveness of fire spells. <sighs> yeah, okay. Storms, I think. Tyranny achievement unlocked, says Galaxy. It's called Exarch, Act 2, issue needed from the Mountain Spire. Okay, here we go. I don't really think I like the edict that I'm casting, but none of them seem all that great. Cool. Ereno says, what in Graven Ash's name? The Iron Marshal turns about, taking in the view in all direction. But Kairos didn't give an edict to read, so how did... Having broken the edict, I seem to be able to recreate it in a limited fashion. You did that? Her hand grasps for her chest. But only Kairos can cast an edict. Now that I've, you've seen what I can do with my own, with your own eyes, you can tell the others. Ha 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 ha! Wrath with the disfavored. Oh, good. Fuck the disfavored, anyway. Your voice carries the weight of the Overlord's magic. She dips into a bow. I should not have doubted you. Of course, have no idea what they've just walked into. The Iron Marshal smashes her gauntlet, uh, gauntlets together with a quiet chuckle. Binder, let us strike now. We must seize the moment and swing their panic into a rout. Hoisting her blade in hand. Aranios moves toward the exit. Boy, I like Aranios. She's pretty hardcore. Fatebinder, I will get the carnage started. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Join me when you are ready and we'll deal with whatever rabble remains. It reminds me of one of my favorite lines in a movie ever. I'm assuming this is a little tangent for you, Gator. I'm assuming it has something to do with a translation difference. 
I'm not sure what it would sound like in the original Japanese. But in the um, Takashi Miike movie 13 Assassins, there's one point where the main character, whose name is Shinzaiman, I think, uh, he's being tasked by the lord of whatever region he's in with uh, basically assassinating a um, the, the shogun's brother because the shogun's brother is a fucking psychopath and they're worried that he will piss off enough people that they'll have a civil war on their hands yeah isn't it a great movie gator anyway so the lord uh, gives Shinzaman this uh, task and Shinzaemon is kind of he's kind of an older samurai so he's kind of like it's like he's kind of thinking like I'm at the probably the end of my career I'm gonna end up being an old man fishing and all that stuff it's not quite the death that a samurai would, would wish for and then like at house he hears Lord Doi's um, order he's like his hand is shaking and he's like oh because he realizes this is his chance to die you know in glorious battle and his line that he says to Lord Doi is I think it's doi i feel bad if it's not doi he says i will accomplish your wish uh i will accomplish your wish with magnificence i'm just like oh <laughs> what a great line what a great way to say you're gonna do something awesome ever since i'm like oh man uh, it'll never come out naturally but just being able to say i will, I will accomplish your wish with magnificence what, what a wonderful line anyway when she said i will get the carnage started that just kind of reminded me of that a little bit there she goes! Apparently by herself! <laughs> I love you, you psychopath. That's great. Defeat the invaders! Enemy forces are massing, and a few invaders have breached the courtyard of the Vendrian's Well Citadel. Repel the invaders and secure the courtyard. Never gonna finish this one, probably. Uh, and I'm not sure what's gonna happen with that one. I thought we would have resolved it last time we spoke to Tuna, but apparently not. Well, gang. This is it. Big fight. I'm not sure if this is the end of the game or not. But it certainly feels like we're getting close. Um, but it is time to switch over to Prey. So we're going to leave it right here. I'm going to save it. And then we'll get it switched over. <laughs>